Hey, welcome to the Ruby Tuesday, my name is Ruby, and this is my review for Vikings Valhalla. Let me know in the comments below, did you enjoy the series that's been on Amazon? It wasn't originally an Amazon original, but eventually Amazon bought the rights, and then they gave us five or six glorious seasons, and now we have a continuation of the story that's now a Netflix original set a hundred years afterwards. So I'm very excited to talk about it. Non-spoilers, obviously, let's jump in. The follow-up series to Vikings set 100 years afterwards and centering on the adventures of Leif Erikson, Freydis, Harold Hardrada, and the Norman King William the Conqueror. So there is eight episodes ranging in about an hour to 45 minutes depending on the episode. There is a sort of contained story but it very much feels like it's setting up a world, a, a, a Viking universe. Uh, and if you've been watching The Last Kingdom you're gonna go into this probably with conflicted feelings because there's a lot of similarities. The way it's shot, the way it looks, the drama of it and I've been recently binge watching, I think I've just binge watched like the first three seasons of The Lost Kingdom because I've been told repeatedly to watch that series and now I'm trying to catch up before we get the last season of The Lost Kingdom. It's a very Viking-esque Netflix at the moment and so if you were wondering what Viking show you were going to watch after The Lost Kingdom, I think this series is going to be around for a long time coming. Nevertheless, Vikings Valhalla it's a, it's a different England. It feels like now we have the Vikings that are very much in the Christianity world. They A lot of the Vikings are now Christians. They've converted from their paganism. But there is a split in the thinking and the sect. And there's also these, these characters and people that are very much against the paganism, not just Christians, but turned Vikings that are against the old paganism ways. There's like a, a obsessive nature for one particular group of people. Then of course we're going to have the politics between kings and queens and, and uh, those alliances that need to be formed for who's going to have whose borders and what England's actually going to look like. And we have those battles that are spliced in between. You know, that's always fun and interesting to see who's going to survive at the end of the day. I would say this is classic Viking storyline. Like you get close to a couple of characters that you like, that you're rooting for, and then there'll be one episode and you're like, damn it, <laughs> I like that character. It, it is definitely one of those series. One of the multiple things that stood out for me in this series though is the costume design in amongst the score and the cinematography. The combination of that sometimes that you see on screen is fantastic especially the the great grand halls of the vikings there's a couple in here that i just thought were so atmospheric and felt authentic although i've never been to an authentic viking hall i want to i feel like there's some viking in me but it just it felt right the way it came off onto screen the way that it was showcased what would have what it would have felt like during that time and then we got some of the you know the pagan the the Odin, Thor, you know, all of those belief systems that the Vikings originally had, they showcase that through some of the costume designs and I guess the spiritual beliefs they have uh, in some of their pagan ways, as the Christian would call them. Uh, and that is showcased through amazing costume design and kind of cinematography that can sometimes look like it's a vision because they're having a vision or they're going on some sort of trip that will then influence their calling. And a lot of this series is touching on that. What is going to be your life path? So whether it's your, if you're, your Christian designs, you're trying to turn people to being Christians or you're just trying to protect your land from the evil pagans. If you're a Viking, you're trying to gather yourself a a winning name that will last forever in heavens and also if you're gonna die die in battle so you can enter Valhalla as a warrior and so you have all these culture clashes that we thought were somehow no longer a massive issue but because of what happens with a king's decision at the beginning of this series it then sparks war and strife so there was a sort of peace between Vikings and Saxons between the English um, and the Vikings and that was okay but then we get Mercia get, getting involved in Normandy and all of these countries that were at peace because one king's decision that's where we start off and I thought well how's this series going to get me emotionally engaged because this is a very big world for me once again to kind of get my head around seeing who the players are who the kings are it's based on fact like a real history but then massively embellished obviously because we weren't there they take the historical documents that we have and then build a story from that from what we know and then build it 
you know, you get your heroes. But what I liked about this, much like the original Vikings, we follow one particular set of Vikings, a family of sorts, the Greenlanders, they call them in uh, this series. And they are a kind of fish out of water because they're not your normal type of Vikings. In fact, all how Vikings have changed in England is a big contention in this series. And so seeing them, you are immediately kind of on their side they're kind of the underdogs and whoever they're following the group of vikings or people that they're with are the underdogs so you kind of rooting for them because they always feel like they're fighting against insurmountable odds i like that because it's easy to root for them i found myself being more emotionally engaged than i expected i think it was episode eight when i, I audibly shouted out no because something happened to her character and i didn't know i had become that invested and i thought for sure i wasn't going to be because i have that mix of the last kingdom in my head and it's very hard to differentiate the two when they're so similar but this does do a lot to kind of separate itself from others even from the original viking series this in ways of like looks, uh, what they're going for, the story. I feel like it, it's doing a good job at separating itself. So it, it's still part of that universe, but it's very much trying to stand on its own two feet, which I really appreciate. So from costume design to acting, our chosen protagonist, I feel like they're all hold screen and presence like they should, because if you're a Viking, you do need to have a sort of presence. You don't need to say much. In fact, if you're a shouty, shouty McTooty person, uh, that often comes across as you're forcing it. But here, a lot of the actors that they've chosen do just have presence, it's particularly the, the king, the Vikings that they're following or their leader that they're following has an amazing amount of presence. You can always tell who the snake or the weasel is and you just hope that they, you know, they eventually will put them down. Very well edited because there are multiple threads that are kind of drawn together and threads that you might not see. In fact, there are threads that you might not know that were threads until they bring them around towards the end. I thought as a storyline that interweaves, it's very, very cleverly done. So much so that, you know, it catches you off guard and then you're like, of course that was going to happen. Makes a lot of sense. So I really appreciated this series. I'm very much looking forward to the next season. Kind of miffed though that they leave us like they do because it's like, hey guys, guess what will happen next season? Now you've got to wait a year. And in this day and age, who knows how long we've got to wait. Stranger Things, by the time the third season is out, it would have been three years, you know, because of COVID and stuff. So it is... It's, it's annoying because we want it more, but that's a good thing. It means that it's done its job well between the acting, costume design, sound, editing, pacing, story, all comes together very well to create quite a well-built story. And it was quite a hard thing to do to once again, build a world, build characters that you're into, build villains that you're into, and then want more by the time you get to the end. And I think they've done a fantastic job. So I'm gonna give this a four and a half Nicolas Cages out of five. Close to my favorite Viking series I've seen in a long time. There is a lot of sex, there's a lot of nudity, there's a lot of violence, not as much as I would say The Last Kingdom, but it's all there and, and don't know what you'd expect if you're watching a Viking series. It's an 18 for a reason because it's you know set to be as authentic as they can, but there isn't a much language like sometimes you know like Ga game of thrones a fantasy series or other i think the last kingdom has more bad language than this series has so it's interesting choice with the language that they've had there acting is great story is really fun give it a go guys well worth your time let me know what your thoughts are what is your favorite viking series or movie ever love to hear your thoughts down below thanks so much for watching this but most of all until next time remember the long tuesday